Some former stars, even though extremely popular once, now have regular 9 to 5 jobs or do other regular stuff you wouldn't expect from them. From actors who decided to stop acting to become professional athletes, to other celebrities who gave up their jobs in order to dedicate their time to their families, join us as we talk about the famous stars that now do something regular for a living. Eighteen, Reed Alexander. The Tau Kappa Epsilon Fraternity organized an engaging talk featuring actor and journalist Reed Alexander, best known as Neville Papperman from Nickelodeon's iCarly. Drawing in over 70 participants on Zoom, the event, skillfully moderated by the fraternity executive board members, delved into Reed's transition from child actor to his current role in journalism. A central theme of the conversation revolved around his commitment to mental health. Armed with a degree in media studies and broadcast journalism from New York University, he shared his journey from reporting on mental health for retreat behavioral health to hosting panels on trauma recovery and the ethical challenges journalists face when covering traumatic events. Reed pointed out the inadequate mental health resources available to survivors at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School after the shooting incident. Troubled by the impact on their well-being, he aimed to raise awareness about the challenges faced by small towns like Parkland post-tragedy. Amidst discussions about his time on iCarly, Reed candidly addressed the pressures of being a young actor and how the experience shaped his pursuit of journalism. Fondly recalling the show as a familial environment, he credited his colleagues for creating a supportive atmosphere. Today, as a financial reporter for Business Insider, Reed seamlessly navigates the world of Wall Street and financial markets. 17. Jeffrey Burton Cohen Jeffrey Bertan Cohen, born on June 25, 1974, is a distinguished American attorney and former child actor, best known for his iconic role as Chunk in Steven Spielberg's 1985 production, The Goonies. Beyond the realm of entertainment, Jeffrey has seamlessly transitioned into a successful legal career, currently serving as a founding partner at the esteemed law firm Cohen and Gardner. Born Jeffrey Burton McMahon in Los Angeles, California, Jeffrey adopted his stage name from his mother's maiden name, Elaine Cohen, and proudly identifies as Jewish. He pursued his undergraduate studies at the University of California, Berkeley, earning a Bachelor of Science degree in business. Notably, Jeffrey sought a college recommendation from the Goonies director, Richard Donner, a gesture that led to Richard and his wife supporting Jeffrey's college education. Jeffrey's journey continued at the University of California School of Law, where he earned a Juris Doctor degree. His foray into the legal realm was motivated by introductions from Richard Donner, who opened doors for Jeffrey in the business side of movie studios. This experience ignited Jeffrey's passion for law, prompting him to embark on a legal career in the entertainment industry. Co-founding Cohen and Gardner in Beverly Hills in 2002, Jeffrey has emerged as a prominent entertainment lawyer, earning recognition in the Dealmaker's Impact Report and The Hollywood Reporter's Next Generation, Hollywood's Top 35 Executives, 35 and Under 16. Daniel Edward Sidney Lloyd Let's dive into the life of Daniel Edward Sidney Lloyd, a former child actor who made a lasting impression in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining. Born on October 13, 1972, in Tremont, Illinois, Daniel's claim to fame was his role as Danny Torrance in the 1980 horror classic. Now here's a cool tidbit. Daniel was hand-picked for the role because he could hold his focus like a champ. In fact, Kubrick managed to shoot all of Danny's scenes without the young actor realizing he was part of a horror film. Imagine that, the magic of movie making. After his stellar turn in The Shining, Daniel decided to take a bow from acting at the ripe age of 10. His last gig was playing young G. Gordon Liddy in the TV film Will G. Gordon Liddy in 1982. Talk about an early retirement. Fast forward to 2004, and Daniel takes a detour into the academic world. Becoming an associate professor in the biology department at Elizabethtown Community and Technical College in Kentucky, he traded the spotlight for the classroom. But guess what? In 2019, Daniel made a surprise cameo in the Shining sequel, Dr. Sleep. That's right, after 36 years, he stepped back in front of the camera as a baseball game spectator. Besides, he lives with his partner Jesse Bowers and is a proud parent to two kids while also also being stepdad to two more from Jesse's previous relationship. 15. Dylan Sprouse 
Dylan Sprouse, largely out of the spotlight compared to his twin brother Cole, has been pursuing a distinctive venture since his Disney days. After earning a degree in video game design from New York University Gallatin School of Individualized Study in 2015, he delved into the world of mead making in Brooklyn, New York. In 2018, he established All Wise Meadery in the basement of the William Vale Hotel in Williamsburg. The journey into mead production started during his college years when he realized his passion for the craft. Reflecting on this, Dylan remarked, After graduating, I realized that it's something I really love doing, and it was also a big business opportunity. His interest in brewing mead traces back to his New York University dorm room, where he initially experimented with home brewing alongside his father. While Dylan still engages in occasional acting projects, he expressed no desire to follow his brother's rigorous television schedule on Riverdale. For Dylan, the daily grind involves being at the brewery by 9 a.m., steering clear of the less conventional path his brother chose in the world of television. 14. Lucas Babin in recent legal proceedings against the Netflix movie Cuties, Tyler County District Attorney Lucas Babin took center stage, seeking criminal indictments related to the alleged production of promotion of lewd visual material. Netflix responded with a motion accusing Lucas of violating principles of due process and fairness, pushing for a temporary restraining order and preliminary injunction. The revelation about Lucas's past added an unexpected twist to the story. Before donning the legal hat, Lucas's career unfolded in the realms of acting and modeling. The son of U.S. rapper Bruce Babin, he began his journey in the entertainment industry, notably featuring as the rocker named Spider in the 2003 film School of Rock. Lucas's entertainment career traversed bit parts on shows like MTV's Undressed and HBO's Sex and the City, where he played the role of model at the party. His versatility even led him to be the lover on the beach in a music video during Paris Hilton's brief music stint. Beyond acting, Lucas's successful modeling career saw him earning up to $7,000 or over €6,000 a day, posing for renowned fashion brands like Gucci and Versace. Venturing to Brazil, he secured regular roles in South American soap operas, such as the 2005 series America. 13. Jerry Mathers Gerald Patrick Mathers, born on June 2, 1948, is a former American actor renowned for his portrayal of Theodore Beaver Cleaver in the television sitcom Leave It to Beaver from 1957 to 1963. Raised in Sioux City, Iowa, he began his career as a child model at the age of two, eventually transitioning into acting. Gerald earned recognition for early film roles, including Alfred Hitchcock's The Trouble with Harry in 1955. His breakthrough came with Leave It to Beaver, where he played Beaver for six years, making history as the first child actor with a merchandising revenue deal. The show's enduring global popularity remains unparalleled. Post-acting, Gerald delved into education, joining the US military during high school and later graduating from the University of California, Berkeley, with a philosophy degree in 1973. After a hiatus, he re-entered the entertainment scene in 1983, reprising his role in the television reunion film, Still the Beaver. In the subsequent decades, Gerald explored diverse career paths, from banking to real estate development, showing his versatility beyond the screen. A survivor of type 2 diabetes, he enrolled in a weight loss program with Jenny Craig and later became a spokesperson for the company after shedding over 40 pounds or a little under 20 kilograms. 12. Freddie Prinze Jr. Freddie Prinze Jr., once a prominent figure in the 90s and early 2000s Hollywood scene, deliberately stepped away from the glitz and glamour, redirecting his focus towards what he considered a more meaningful life. Known for his roles in iconic films like She's All That and I Know What You Did. Last summer, Freddie experienced a profound shift in priorities. Venturing into diverse realms, he co-authored a cookbook, Back to the Kitchen, alongside Rachel Wharton, showcasing his culinary passion. Beyond Hollywood, Freddie lent his voice to video games, leaving his mark in Mass Effect, Legendary Edition, and Dragon Age, Inquisition, Trespasser. His involvement in Star Wars projects, including Star Wars, Rebels and Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker, pointed out his versatile talents. However, his decision to step back from acting was not solely fueled 
by Creative Pursuits. A stint on the Series 24 alongside Kiefer Sutherland proved challenging, leading Freddie to re-evaluate his career path. Fatherhood became a transformative force, compelling him to prioritize family over the demanding entertainment industry. Today, Freddie continues to cherish his role as a devoted father with his wife, Sarah Michelle Geller. 11. Rick Moranis Renowned for his comedic brilliance in the 80s and 90s through iconic works like Ghostbusters and Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, Rick Moranis vanished from the screen 25 years ago, leaving many wondering about his absence. The reason, however, is profoundly personal. Rick chose to step away from Hollywood to focus on raising his children after his wife, Anne Belsky, succumbed to breast cancer in 1991. In a 2015 interview, Rick clarified that this transition wasn't a formal decision, but a natural response to the demands of parenting. Despite the hiatus from on-screen roles, he remained engaged in various creative pursuits. From writing and animating to voice roles in projects like Brother Bear and Miss Spider's Sunny Patch Kids, Rick continued to contribute to the entertainment landscape. Known for being discerning in his choices, Rick candidly turned down roles, including a part in the 2016 Ghostbusters remake. His selectivity reflects a commitment to projects that resonate with him, emphasizing quality over quantity. A couple years ago, though, whispers of his return surfaced with the announcement of a new sequel to Honey, I Shrunk the Kids titled Shrunk. However, as of 2024, the project has not yet progressed to the filming stage. 10. Alicia Silverstone Alicia Silverstone, renowned for her breakthrough role in Clueless, candidly revealed that her decision to step away from Hollywood was rooted in her discontent with the industry. Despite her early successes in the Crush and Aerosmith's music videos, the sudden fame and the complexity it brought made her uncomfortable. In an interview with The Hollywood Reporter, Alicia reflected on her challenging journey with fame, especially after Clueless. Unprepared for the profound shift in her identity, she acknowledged lacking the tools to navigate stardom. Despite subsequent high-profile roles, including Batman and Robin, Alicia found herself unhappy. Her retreat from acting marked a pivot toward activism. Focusing on causes like elephant conservation in Africa and rainforest protection in Peru. Embracing her passion for writing on healing and health, she authored books like The Kind Diet. While taking smaller acting roles, it was her experience in David Mamet's play Boston Marriage in 2007 that reignited her love for acting. 9. Peter Ostrom Ever wondered what happened to Peter Ostrom, the kid who played Charlie in Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory? Well, after his debut in the iconic film, he basically vanished from Hollywood. So what's his story? Turns out, Peter left the spotlight intentionally. After rocking it as Charlie Bucket at the age of 12, he had the chance to sign a three-film deal, but decided to go against it. Why? He craved the freedom to shape his future projects without being tied down. Instead of continuing in acting, Peter took a wild turn. He pursued a career as a veterinarian. Yep, you heard that right. From landing the golden ticket to handling real-life animals. His passion for animals led him to Cornell University College of Veterinary Medicine, where he earned his doctorate in 1984. Imagine that, the guy who once held a golden ticket now cares for pets. Peter practiced as a vet at Countryside Veterinary Clinic in Lowville, New York, until his recent retirement in September 2023. Today, he's living a quiet life in New York with his wife, Loretta, and their two grown-up kids, Helenka and Leaf. Life's full of surprises, right? 8. Michael Schofling Michael Earl Schofling, born on December 10, 1960, holds a unique place in cinematic history as an American former actor and model. Hailing from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania, he spent his formative years in South Jersey, graduating from Cherokee High School in Evesham Township, New Jersey. Michael pursued higher education at Temple University in Philadelphia, focusing on liberal arts. In the mid-1980s, his foray into modeling for GQ marked the beginning of a multifaceted journey. At 23, Michael gained international recognition for his portrayal of Jake Ryan in the iconic teen film Sixteen Candles. He continued his acting career with notable roles in films like Vision Quest, Mermaids, Let's Get Harry, and Wild Hearts Can't Be Broken. 
Eventually transitioning from acting, Michael embraced a passion for woodworking, channeling his creativity into producing handcrafted furniture at his woodworking shop. 7. Phoebe Cates Let's catch up on Phoebe Cates, the 80s icon we all loved. You remember her from Fast Times at Ridgemont High, right? That pool scene with Brad's fantasy, classic stuff. So what's she been up to lately? Well, Phoebe took a step back from movies over two decades ago, and her last flick was almost a decade before that. Apart from a quick voice gig in a 2015 video game, she's been steering clear of the acting scene. Now, it's not the usual Hollywood story of an actor struggling for roles. Nope, it's more like Hollywood took a back seat in Phoebe's life. Life happened, and in 1994, after Princess Caribou, Phoebe hit pause on acting to focus on raising her kids, Owen and Greta, who've gone on to do some cool stuff in filmmaking and music. Phoebe did make a cameo appearance in 2001 for a friend's movie, the anniversary party, and a bit of voice work in 2015. But here's the scoop, she's been busy with a boutique called Blue Tree on Madison Avenue in New York since 2005. Clothes, antiques, jewelry, you name it. 6. Mara Wilson Mara Wilson, known for her childhood roles in films like Mrs. Doubtfire and Matilda, made a deliberate exit from Hollywood at the age of 13. Despite early success, she felt disenchanted with the industry during her teen years, battling depression and anxiety exacerbated by the challenges of puberty on film sets. In her 2016 autobiography, Where Am I Now? True Stories of Girlhood and Accidental Fame, Mara revealed the emotional toll of growing up in the limelight. She faced societal pressure regarding her appearance and decided to step away from acting to focus on writing, a passion she'd always nurtured. Mara's departure from Hollywood allowed her to embark on a new journey, marked by personal growth and a commitment to authenticity. Since her return to acting in 2012, she has engaged in web series, stage roles, and occasional screen appearances. However, her primary focus has definitely shifted to writing, contributing to various publications and advocating for mental health, LGBTQ issues, and against the sexualization of young actresses in Hollywood. 5. Corey Harrison Corey Harrison, a prominent figure from the renowned TV show Porn Stars, has experienced significant life shifts beyond the spotlight. Departing from the scripted drama of reality television, Corey has encountered both triumphs and trials. In 2014, Corey faced a life-altering moment surviving a severe motorcycle accident. His subsequent surgery for a broken hand marked a turning point. A brush with pre-diabetes compelled him to undergo lap band surgery, leading to a remarkable weight loss. Adopting healthier habits, Corey emphasized the importance of mindful eating post-surgery. Navigating personal relationships, Corey endured two divorces, the first with high school sweetheart Charlene in 2015 and the second with Karina Kiki Harrison in 2018, a year after their marriage. Despite the marital challenges, they share a son named Richard Benjamin Harrison. In his professional realm, Corey secured a stake in the family pawn shop, demanding and receiving 5% ownership, potentially expanding in the future. As he manages day-to-day -day operations, Corey positions himself to eventually inherit the establishment, a responsibility rooted in family history, especially after the loss of his grandfather. 4. Andrew Shu. After Andrew Shue's prominent role in Melrose Place, he transitioned away from acting and explored diverse endeavors. Despite his initial inclination towards acting, he decided to step back due to the challenges of self-promotion. His acting hiatus was interrupted briefly for the 2007 sports drama Gracie, where he not only starred, but also co-wrote the story and co-produced alongside his sister, Elizabeth Shue's husband, Davis Guggenheim. Andrew, a passionate soccer enthusiast, had a short-lived but noteworthy soccer career playing for Queen's Park, FC, and LA Galaxy. His involvement brought attention to the sport in the US, despite some considering it a marketing strategy. Post-retirement from acting, Andrew delved into entrepreneurship. In the early 2000s, he co-founded Cafe Media, creating successful brands like CEMI Marketing. 
Inspired by personal experiences, he initiated Club Mom, evolving into Cafe Mom, a platform catering to new mothers. Additionally, Andrew ventured into the podcast realm, co-hosting Mad Life with his second wife, Amy Roback. They also co-authored a children's book, Better Together. Notably, Andrew contributed to social causes by co-founding the non-profit Do Something in the early 90s. His personal life made headlines with a public divorce from Amy Roback in 2023, following her involvement in a relationship that led to her dismissal from Good Morning America. 3. Curtis Blow Curtis Walker, better known as Curtis Blow, made history as the first commercially successful rapper and the pioneer signed by a major record label. His journey unfolded from the streets of Harlem, Manhattan, shaping his influential career. Beyond his musical prowess, Curtis ventured into film production, acting, and even embraced ministry. After a groundbreaking start with hits like Christmas Rappin' and The Breaks, Curtis continued his musical odyssey, releasing a total of 17 albums. His impact extended beyond personal success, as he played a crucial role in shaping the careers of artists like The Fat Boys and Run DMC. He immersed himself in film, both in front of and behind the camera, contributing to productions like Crush Groove and Das Leben Amerikanischer Gangs. In the late 90s, Curtis shifted gears, passionately advocating against racism and contributing to socially relevant projects. His commitment to hip-hop's legacy led to his role as chairman of the Universal Hip Hop Museum, set to open in 2023. A man of many talents, Curtis Blow, also an ordained minister, founded the Hip Hop Church in Harlem. 2. Jennifer Stone Ever wondered what happened to Jennifer Stone from Wizards of Waverly Place? Well, buckle up because her journey after the show is pretty incredible. So, after rocking the role of Harper Finkel, Jennifer shifted gears. She didn't just hit the books, she dove into nursing. Yep, you heard it right. From Disney star to a registered nurse with degrees from Glendale Community College and Azusa Pacific University. But wait, there's more. Beyond the glitz of Hollywood, Jennifer stepped into the indie film scene with The In Between in 2019. Critics loved it, and it showcased her talent in a whole new light. Here's the kicker. Amidst all this, she became a real-life hero. When the pandemic hit, she didn't shy away. Nope, she joined the front line, working in the emergency room of a Burbank, California hospital. Now, rewind a bit. Imagine leaving the acting spotlight to face a diabetes diagnosis at 20. Jennifer did just that. She traded scripts for psychology and then nursing. 1. Ashley Olsen Ashley Fuller Olsen, born on June 13, 1986, has transitioned from her early acting days to become a prominent businesswoman and fashion designer, beginning her acting career at just nine months old alongside her twin sister, Mary Kate. The duo gained fame with their shared role in the popular sitcom Full House. In 1993, they founded the production company Jewel Star Entertainment Group, producing various successful TV movies. In 2012, both Mary-Kate and Ashley signaled their retirement from acting to focus on their flourishing fashion careers. They co-founded luxury brand The Row, Elizabeth and James, and more affordable lines like Olsen Boy and Style Mint. Their influence extends to the Council of Fashion Designers of America, where they are members. Ashley and Mary have consistently appeared on Forbes The Celebrity 100 list and Forbes 30 Under 30 All-Star Alumni list. Apart from their fashion ventures, they've delved into philanthropy, launching a perfume line and winning the WSJ Magazine Innovator of the Year Award in 2012. Ashley's personal life includes a marriage to artist Louis Eisner, with whom she has a son born in 2023. Which star that now works 9 to 5 did you find the most interesting? Let us know in the comments. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more videos that we made, click on one on the screen or take a look at the channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.